So welcome back to part two in uh, the series on developing a real-world engineering application in C-sharp from scratch. And this application was discussed in part one of this application. And it is a simulator to simulate a network of thermal sensors, basically temperature measuring devices, simulating a large network of temperature measuring devices and applying some statistical analysis to analyze a question I had in another series I'm doing, which is looking at the data behind climate change and how you can uh, use a, a big network of thermal sensors to measure the global time climate within an accuracy of a tenth of a degree. So um, we're going to start looking at the details of, of how to develop an application like that. And we're going to talk about a bunch of stuff. In this, in this part two, we're going to specifically talk about developing a user interface and also a class library, which I always use when I develop C-sharp applications to do um, stuff like debugging and logging and a bunch of other things. So we're going to talk about that in this series. So um, the topics we're going to talk about in the rest of this series, like I said, designing the user interface, uh, developing a class library for things like logging and debugging. We're going to talk about random number generators, Windows Forms charts, which can get kind of complicated if you haven't used them in a while. Histograms, developing histograms from the charts. Uh, statistical analysis, doing link, language integrated query for array manipulations and a bunch of other stuff. So um, let me briefly run this application and you can see um, what we're doing. And here we've got a bunch of um, uh, user interface elements, and I press this button, and it samples our network of a thousand devices. And here I've got a list of of sample readings, one reading from each of a thousand devices. And then here I've got a couple charts where I do some statistical analysis to see um, the occurrence of the different uh, reading values, and then averages. And I print out some averages here, and I can press the button and do more readings and more readings and more readings. So basically, this is what we're going to start to talk about. We're going to first focus on the user interface and how you how I set that up. So the first thing we're going to look at is developing a user interface. So generally, the very first thing I do when I'm starting a Windows Forms application is uh, I click on the form and I change the font. And the reason I do that is because generally the font, the default font of eight is usually too small. So I change it to like 12 and you can see the form expands. But the good thing about this is if you change it on the base form, then anytime you add a control to this form, it will inherit that font. So all of the child controls on this form will have a 12 point font, which makes things a lot nicer. So, um, that's the very first thing I do. The second thing I do is I go in and I always add one text box. So why do I add a text box? Well, one of the things that I like to do when I am writing any, any application that is even a little bit complex is I like to have a text box where I can send data to look at as I'm developing the, the application. It's kind of like a debugging and logging feature. And um, I know you can do that in uh, Visual Studio. You can do a lot of debugging stuff. But sometimes it's just a whole lot easier. Like if you have a, a bunch of array values and you want to you look at them, uh, it's nice to have a text box. You just send it out. You look at it. And then when you're, you're finished developing, you can just um, delete this text box and move on. But, I always like to do it, and as you can see now, um, this has inherited the 12-point font. So now uh, when I send data, it's in a readable font. Now, of course, one of the challenges with a text box is it's kind of uh, annoying and challenging to format your data and send it out to the text box. So what I like to do is I have a what's called a class library. I'm a big fan of class libraries where you basically bundle up a bunch of commonly used uh, classes and methods into a library and save that as a dynamic link library. 
and then just reference that DLL uh, when you're building your application. In this case, here's an example of a DLL I've got that I use to make it very, very easy to send data to a text box. And you can see over here, I've got a few CS files doing different things, but one of them is the logger. And that's one of the, the um, classes I use in this um, temperature sensor application. So I'm not going to go into detail on how to do a class library. It's fairly straightforward. You add a new project uh, that is a class library. You can select that in Visual Studio. And then um, for each class, you just do um, uh, here, you just right click, add, and you can add a class. And then you fill up the class with whatever you want. In my case, I use public static, so they're accessible everywhere. And then once you've got your classes, you just go to build, build solution, and that will generate a DLL in the folder where this is located, where this uh, solution is located. And then all you have to do is pull that DLL out and reference it in, um, right here you add references, and um, then you've got this functionality ready to go. In this case, I've got a logger class, and it has a method called logit. And I override that method to allow me to send out different types of data using the same method. So for example, I've got a public static void log it. And I've got one, two, three, four overridden or overloaded methods that allow me to send a integer or a double or a string or a double array to the text box. So all I do is I say logger.log it. And I give it either the integer or the double or the string or the array, uh, give it a name to put into the text box, and then tell it what, feed it a text box, like textbox1.text, and it will automatically print out. And what it does is it just does a append text, and you feed it the name, so it puts the name equals. Uh, the in this case the integer dot two string and environment to uh, new line. In this case, it does a double array. So for the length of the array, it will output uh, like a and in brackets it will put the index and then the value and and uh, make a new line. So now back in the application, all I have to do is go to project references and add reference. And I've got my DLL, which I call toolslibrary.dll. And I just select that. And now I can um, use that reference. Here's toolslibrary.dll. And I can use that logger.logit method, uh, overloaded method, in my application. So now if I want to use that, I go um, view the code, right click on that, view the code, and I'm in the main application. So all I have to do is go up here and say, using tools library. So now what I can do is, let's say I have uh, int a equals 10. And I want to send that to the, to the text box. So I need to put in uh, the, the number, a string with a name, and the name of the text box. So a, a is the name, and text box 1. And then I can start it up, and it will print out a equals 10. Now I can also say double array b equals and say 12.3, 45.4, 16 16.5. And if I change it to B, you can see B0 equals 12.3, B1 equals 45.4. So at this point, we have the first component in our user interface. And this, this text box is going to be, it's going to take up the left side of the user interface. 
And it's going to be where I send out my array of a thousand readings from each of the 1,000 devices we're simulating. And it just is going to print out all of the values of the um, array so I can take a look at them and see if they're all random as I, as I need. And the next thing I'm going to have to add are two charts. Now, most of these components, I'm going to modify them in code as opposed to up front. What I'm going to do is make a chart here. And there you've got the first chart. You can make it whatever size you want. Take another chart, make it whatever size you want. And this top one is going to handle our histogram of the um, values that, that come out of the, each of the sensors. And then this bottom one is going to handle the histogram of the average values. And then over on the right, I'm going to put in a group box container. Group box. And that's going to hold just a bunch of text boxes that are going to um, give us uh, some values. And then I'm going to put in a button to start the simulation. And basically, that's it um, for the UI control. Like I say, most of this is going to be done in software. That's it for the UI stuff. Uh, I encourage you to, to uh, check out the first video and also to stick around and watch uh, part three where we get into some of the, um, the coding of this application. So if you, uh, if you like this, please subscribe and hit like. And otherwise, thanks much and have a great day.